wonderful to I to follow on that February to me March 2020, when COVID when the pandemic beginning to stop everything in our life. Yes, myself included. University classes move from here to here. Don't forget about the section too. For good reasons, certainly protecting everyone. Thus, making home is a thing that I remember the most during these two years. Aside from studies, I added the pandemic by doing several things. Let's see. Sleeping. What? Watching Netflix and etc. Hmm. Playing games. Wait, am I on this map? But one thing I didn't let the most is learning online self-study courses with almost at once a skill acquisition medium to be able to compete with others and others in the last three years academy. From there, you can learn anywhere and anytime. Tech events and college certificates. That's really cool, right? I am already and currently doing several tech business and language courses from the like Cell Academy to Bangkit. So, when the time still allow for you to do so, let's improve ourselves in learning online courses. Before I go to campus, I take jogging first near my home because pandemic situation. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed my activities, so I'm used to doing everything by myself. I'm here alone doing some tasks like coding or do my research because I'm in my final semester alone because of the pandemic. To relax my mind, I play type tennis and don't forget to pray. Back to home, take virtual meeting. Hello, 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 hello there. Welcome to Bangkit Guest Speaker Sessions. And yeah, before that, good afternoon, all participants, especially Bangkit 2022 beloved cohort. My name is Awal. I'm an alumnus of Cloud Computing Path in Bangkit 2021. And I will be your moderator for today's sessions. I'm feeling so honored, excited, and nervous at the same time now. <laughs> I can even imagine it. Okay, if you don't mind, please share how you feel about today's sessions at the chat box. I hope everyone is feeling excited as well. Okay, before we continue, I would like to congratulate you guys on your success in reaching up to this phase where you have just completed the capstone project. Please give yourself a pat on the back. You've done a great hard work. I know it's it's really, really long way so that you can end up in this phase that a lot of coding, a lot of tags, and yeah, maybe some uh, fight with your friends, I don't know. Okay, so the theme of our session today is very aligned with you guys that just finished the capstone project. The theme is start up, validate, or die. Ooh, delivered by our distinguished speaker, Ms. Mas Sandy Colondam, GoPlay content creator head at Gojek. So our session will be divided into three main agendas, which is opening by me, then we will have the presentation of our material by our distinguished speaker. Last but not least, we will have a Q&A session that you can join through our YouTube live chat box. Okay, so the purpose of today's session is that at the end of today's session, we hope what we really hope that you will learn more about how to start your own startup and what are the important things you should know before building it. So it's very linear with you guys just finished the capstone project, right? So for all our, so for all the cohort, AKA future founder, please put all your spirit in learning at today's sessions. Okay, be guys, before we jump into our main sessions, uh, which will be led by our speaker, Mr. Sandy Colendon, first let us get to know our speaker today. So Mr. Sandy is content creator head at Godplay Gojek. He also have experience as chief of operation at Pitmix, social media photo apps, and his educational background is uh, he finished bachelor degree at Venus University 
and also Mr. Sandy finished his study about games technology at Murdoch University. Here are some of his honors and awards. Mr. Sandy win his first prize in App Ideas category at Indosat Uribu Wireless Innovation Contest at 2015, and he also win at Indosat Wireless Innovation Contest at 2013, also at the first prize. And also have another amazing achievement, which is become the first place winner at Jarum Black Apps Competition at 2013. So before we say much more again, so let's welcome our speaker, Mr. Sandy Kolondam. Hello, Mr. Sandy. How's your day? Hello, Mas Awa. I'm feeling good. Thank you for mentioning all my achievement. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't really like it though, when people mention my achievements. Not okay. Good. Okay. Now on LinkedIn, on LinkedIn, it is fine because I use it, uh, you know, to impress my colleagues and then impress my uh, upcoming partner and then by looking at my LinkedIn and then they become convinced, oh, this guy know what they are doing, right? But to mentioning to how many people that we have right now? 2000? Around like 3,000. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank you so much. So. Okay, thank you, Mas Noted. And are you excited to share your knowledge and experience about Startup to Bangkit 2022 today? Because, because I'm super excited today. Yes, I am. I am. I mean, it's a, it, it is a very important topic. And I believe that you guys should really, really know how to apply this in your startup. So yeah, I think that will be very interesting. Okay, thank you, Mas. Uh, okay, guys, uh, don't forget to bring notes and please always put your full attention because this will be helpful for you to learn. And if you have questions throughout the sessions, please put them in YouTube live chat box, okay? And without further ado, Let's welcome our speaker, Mr. Sandy. Time and place is yours. Thank you so much, Mas Awa. That's it was a very great opening speech. Oh, I'm as ne I'm as nervous as he is right now. But uh, okay, let's let's just let's just start. All right. So I'm going to share screen, guys, and then uh, I'm I'm so very sorry as well that I have to do this in English because um, yeah, they say that it's a default language is being used in this. Uh, Bankit Academy, right? So yeah. But anytime I will, if I if I if I find it too complex to explain in English, then I'll just try to use Bahasa Indonesia. So um, Mas Awal has already introduced me, and actually about the winning of the awards that I always won the first prize. It is simply because I created a very very good uh, deck pitch. And all of this competition that I've won, I think over the years, I think over that uh, I have won like seven or eight awards, and people start calling me like as a prize hunter. Sandy is the prize hunter. You just won. You just won the money or anything. I don't. I don't really care, right? But um, in those kind of competition, they usually have these uh, two categories. The first category is the idea only category, and the second category is they have this um, prototype kind of category. So you cannot just have an idea, you have to build something with your idea, right? I always want the idea one. I always join just the idea one because I'm not a very good programmer. Uh, that's why I don't do the uh, prototyping part. I only join the idea category. For like eight years, I joined the idea category and I always win the first prize just because I do my deck pitch, right? So I can win the, the pitch just because I do the validation, right? right? This is why, uh, let me put on a slideshow first. Um, this is why the topic is validate or die because during my history uh, building a startup company, um, it has been up and down. I have been failed as well because I tried to build an apps and I tried to push all the features before even it launched. I tried to push everything before even I did anything validation. Before ever I ask anyone if I, they need this kind of application, I just build an apps and then uh, with my team and then we, we discuss that, hey, do you think this is a good feature? Do you think this is a good idea? Let's put it on the apps. And then when we, we are going to launch it and then somebody comes and says, it's not complete apps yet. Right? You need to put more feature in it. Don't launch it yet. It's dangerous, right? And then that's, that's a huge failure. And we, work, we waste like, uh, I don't know, like one year or two years building that startup. So that's over, and then I create another startup uh, having in mind that uh, we need to validate first. Whatever that we are doing, we need to validate first. And then that startup uh, got me into uh, Series A, 
which got me around three million US dollars. And then after that startup, we merged with Gojek company and we become uh, the, the live streaming service for Gojek right now. So the word validate or die might be too extreme for you to hear, but it, it is the fact. I mean, if you don't validate, uh, there is a bigger chance that you will be dying in the middle of the process. Right? If you don't validate early, there is a chance that your business will not take off at all. And if it happens, then you will waste so many, many times. So moving on to the next slide. Okay. So let's start with the question, right? What is the most important factor of startup early success? I will consider you guys as a very, very early startup, right? Uh, because you have idea, you have a, you have a team, um, uh, and the team is still learning about machine learning and stuff, about programming and stuff. So I consider you guys as an ideation phase of an early startup. So what is the most important factor of startup in early success? Right? Is it the mind-blowing ideas? Because um, maybe one of your colleague, one of your friends says that, uh, I have this a very brilliant idea. And then you reply to, wow, that's amazing. You can get like a million dollars from it. Right? It's a mind-blowing idea. Is it the high tech? Is it because your friend is a very good programmer? And then your designer won an award or something like that? Or is it because the apps has already done, it's very complete, packed with a lot of features and something like that? Or is it because your mom put some funding into you? Or maybe your uh, ex-boss or your, your or lecturer put some money believing that you have a very good apps, right? The fact is, it's, not, it's none of this, right? So the most important factor of startup early success is not because of the good ideas, it's not because of the technology that you have, it's not because you're a good programmer and everything. But for me, what is the most important thing factor of startup early success is to understand what your customer needs and wants. This is the essence of validation. Whatever you do, you need to understand what your customer needs and wants before you are doing it, right? It's almost the same like, uh, if you are if you are a guy and then you want to get you want to be with this particular girl right to be your girlfriend right and then what, what are you doing usually and then you start to like analyze her be behavior right and then you start to understand what he, what she likes you start to see like you start to stalk her right and then you start to see that oh she's actually uh, going from this place to that place in this particular time so I know so that guy will know when is the best moment to propose to her, right? What kind of gift that I should give her, right? Because he knows what the customer wants. In this case, the customer is the girlfriends, right? Even if we're being like a couple, boyfriend and girlfriend, it's, it's still very important to understand what your customer needs and wants. And then another good study case is that when you want to give someone else a birthday gift, um, I think uh, to me personally, I will always say what I want. Right. Uh, if somebody said like, "Hey, what do you want to have on your birthday party?" and then I'll just say what I want. Right. So I have this wish list. If you want to give me and if you want to make me happy, and then you can just purchase from one of these lists. Right. I don't need the surprise bullshit, and then I I don't end up using the stuff that you have. So uh, it will be very appreciated if you can ask me what kind of stuff or what kind of gift do I want on my birthday gift. Right. So it's important to understand what your customer needs and wants. Because if you do know what they want, and then you will be able to deliver what they want, not something else that they don't want, right? So uh, select your part of adventure. Okay, this is this is based on my experience uh, mentoring some of you guys. Maybe some of you guys, about five teams, have been mentored by me. So select your part of adventure. Are you going to be idea first, or are you going to be a problem first, right? Some of guy, some of guys that I have uh, met and that I have mentored, uh, they tend to go to the idea first. So they, um, when they present to me, when they pitch to me, and they will go with things like, uh, hello, Ka, uh, I have this idea. I think the idea is very brilliant. Um, and this is our plan. This is our prototype and something like that. Uh, and then when I ask like, so what kind of problem that you are actually trying to solve, right? There's no point if there is no problem, right? Um, there's no point if you just come up with an idea first. You need to have a problem first, right? And then after the problem, then you get an idea to solve that problem, right? So the thing with idea first is that uh, the response they usually get if you have like an idea first, 
um, when you explain like your idea to someone else, and then uh, those someone else will tell to you that, oh, it's such a great idea, right? You are brilliant. I never thought of that. That will work, right? All, all of the all of the praise, all right. But if you if you try to investigate like the problem for the solution, and then um, you will understand. You will understand that your customer will say something like, um, "Yeah, I have this problem. Uh, this problem caused me to lose my time. Uh, I don't know how to do this. Uh, the the current solution is too expensive, and something like that." You know, you get the genuine. You get a genuine problem from 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 uh, approaching the problem first, right? But anyway, it's not too late, right? It's not too late, guys. I know that uh, some of you guys have been go through even up to a prototype. Uh, some of you have already built an MVP as well. But it's not too late to uh, continue by investigating what the problem first, because it is eventually okay if you have idea first, and then later on, and then you start to realize that. Nobody use my apps, and then I need to take my time to take a look if there is actually any problem with my idea, right? Okay, so this is what I'm going to go through. And to be honest, this is my first time presenting this kind of uh, topic. And it's really made specifically for uh, Bankit because I know that you guys are a very early startup uh, scene. So that's why I think this is, this is very important. If you have any question, you can just put it in the comment. I will uh, reply to you later. So the first, the number one thing that is the most important that define whether your solution will be good, whether your business will be good, whether your idea will be good is how painful the problem is, like how, how you know, how bad the problem is, how many people that is impacted by this problem. Right? This is a, this is the core of the question of the validation. You you need to know how painful the problem is. Okay. So I have this diagram that I took from the internet. And this says that uh, intensity of a problem or pain uh, is defined by this table, be it an important and not important, and urgent and not urgent. Important means something, important and urgent means something that is very, very painful, something that you have you have to do, right? I think I, uh, hold on, I create some examples of uh, what could be fall into important and very urgent. So for like like for example, like it will be very painful if you, for example, you got an accident, you got a motorbike accident, and then you broke your leg. It becomes very important. It becomes very urgent that you go to the hospital, right? Or for example, in, if you are in the highway and then your car broke down, right? And then you have a car, but you don't know how to change the tire. It becomes important and urgent that you know how to change the tire or you know how to call somebody that does, right? And then another example is that. Um, it becomes very important and urgent if, for example, uh, you're, you're creating your, your scripts here, right? And then your laptop hard disk just got broken, right? And all of data on, on, the, on, the, on the folder disappear or something like that. It becomes very important and becomes very urgent that you find solution to back up those files, right? And that's why otherwise you will probably be dying or it'll be very, very frustrating, right? And then the, 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 uh, the second one is actually the not important um, but, but urgent, right? Is for example that um, um, you have to pay your credit card bill on time, right? Uh, if, if somebody, if you borrow money from somebody that you have to pay them, you have to pay them on time, right? It's not important for you, but it is in fact urgent, right? And then another thing that is uh, important, but not urgent, so it's important, but not urgent, not urgent meaning that you can do it anytime else, but it is important that you have to do it, right? Some example is that like, if you, uh, for example, if you graduate from university and then you have to find a job, right? It's become, a, for some people, it might be important and urgent, but some of the other people, it become like, it is important, but probably not urgent especially if you are still in your first year of uh, in uni, right? But if you are like in the last year of uni, it becomes important and urgent that you need to find looking a job as soon as possible, right? And another thing, another thing is that uh, all, the administrative, all the administrative process, like if you are trying to create a passport, right? They have you to fill all this long form, bring your kartu larga, bring your KTP and everything like that. It's a very tedious process that you have to do it, right? It's not urgent, but it's important that you have to do it. And the last one, can you guess what is the last one? 
what kind of activity that can fall into last one the annoying part that is not is this problem is not important it's not urgent it's not a problem at all uh, it falls into annoying it's actually games it's actually mobile games right it's not important it's not urgent you will not die if you don't play games you don't you will not die if you don't play facebook and instagram or something like that your life will be okay without them but it is right now the situation is that is that it's uh it's annoying this kind of thing is 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 annoying you know if you can, if you cannot access them um it is okay but you'll be annoyed can you imagine if facebook down or maybe you are using or you are an, an avid tiktok users tiktok down you will be annoyed <laughs> can you can you imagine but you will not die from it it's not important it's not urgent right so you will not die for it so this is the intensity of our problem i want you to keep this in mind because this is very very useful to like put it on a matrix of what kind of problem that falls into this kind of category that you will try to solve right so let, let's start let's start with an, let's start with an example okay um i have a list of ideas here that i want to look at so the first one is a is a food delivery right it's a food delivery um try to think of yourself because i cannot look into the comment bar so try to look into yourself what do you think food delivery falls into like go food grab food shoppy food and something like that right food delivery to me it might fall into um it is actually kind of falls into not important not urgent right you can actually go to the store by yourself right so it's not really a, a problem and then traffic jam with 50 percent delay which becomes like uh important and not urgent perhaps because you know that you can uh in some cases it might be urgent as well because you might be coming late to the school you might be coming late to the uni but again it depends on the intensity of the delay that is caused by the traffic jam and then limited and parking space limited and parking space i think it falls into a category like um, not important and urgent right it's not really important but you have uh, but you are, you are in the middle of the street right? you need to find some somewhere to to park right you cannot just go back home and then change the Gojek or something, but you are there already and then you need to find a parking. That's become a limited parking space. And then also cash payment and then plan pass. Plan pass or uh, the Indonesian word is hamatanaman. Uh, yeah, hamatanaman. Yeah, it is one of my startup. It's one of my the startup that I mentor for Bankit, right? So plan pass, it can become very important and urgent, right? Can you imagine if you're being a farmer right and then you wake up one day and then you find all your plan gone because of the past it become a very important and urgent right you need to find a solution right and especially the farm farmers probably know when is the season of the past is coming right they know exactly when the passes are coming and how right and it's become very important and urgent that you know how to solve it right and then finding laundry Nowadays, we have so many like founding uh, laundry services, right? And then uh, finding laundry, perhaps it falls into, what do you guys think? Uh, important, not urgent. Uh, yeah, I think at today's era, it falls into like um, uh, important and not urgent because you have, uh, you have this uh, laundry piling up, but it's not very urgent that you go to find the laundry, right? But, but that needs to be clean anyway and then shoes laundry is also actually become important and not urgent right now because you know the surface exists and then you feel like i cannot clean my shoes alone because there is shoes laundry and then home waste disposal right home waste disposal is also one of the startup that i mentor for bankit uh, so the idea is that uh, there will be somebody to pick up the waste the plastic waste especially uh, on your behalf to do your home and then it also becomes something like not important and urgent, right? Because you have this waste, it needs to be thrown away. Otherwise, it will not be good for your health. Uh, it will not be good for your home, right? It needs to, to go away, right? And then the last one, finding girlfriend. Where do you? What? Where, where does it fall into? Finding girlfriends. You know, before Tinder, we we don't have any problem finding girlfriend, right? And then we can just uh, tag someone in the school, ask her out, and then. That's it. So where, where does finding girlfriend falls into? I think it kind of falls into not important and not urgent. But there are so many ideas that is actually not important or urgent. If you ask me, and then in your heart right now, then how become how come Facebook become very popular? Right? It's not important. It's not urgent. 
how come uh, games become popular? Right? Not important and not urgent. Right? I will, I will explain to you later. But those kind of things, you can, you may build them, but you have, you have less chance to be success versus if you build something for important and urgent problem. Right. So we have this example of the problem. We just need to find out like um, how much of this problem will actually grow at scale and then how often. Right. So as you can see that traffic jam, 10% delay is still called traffic jam, but 10% delay is okay. I can manage, right? It, it becomes something like uh, it's not important, not urgent. But it becomes 50% of delay, right? It's maybe it grows into like not import, uh, important, but not urgent, right? If it become like 200% delay, it can kill someone, right? It can kill someone. Like the one, the case uh, during the uh, Lebaran, when everybody goes home, uh, the traffic becomes heavy, and then, uh, you know, people actually die in the car, right? It becomes important and urgent, right? So it depends on the problem as well. So goes with the limited parking space, right? If you live in an area with, with so many open spaces, uh, if you live in an area like uh, Tangra, and then you live in a, I don't know, like Yogyakarta, perhaps Sido Arjo, perhaps, where I don't see this problem at all, right? Because I can just park anywhere. I can just park in front of someone else's home. Nobody will care, right? I can just park anywhere I want. That, in that particular city, no problem, right? But can you imagine if you are in Jakarta and then you are uh, going to a mall in the weekend, that becomes a problem. So, yeah, do, do, uh, do you sense the, the difference, right? Uh, it depends on how much of this problem can grow and scale eventually, and then how often it happens, right? It goes with the, the, the question of the how often uh, is, for example, like the plan pass, right? The hama uh, tanaman, right? How often it will impact the farmer? Is it once a year? Is it twice a year? Why is it important to know? Because you will learn how many times this farmer will buy your service. Is it once a year? Is it twice a year? It's because it depends on how often they got the problem. Same goes with the Swiss laundry, right? Uh, you will know that how much money you will get based on how often people need to wash their shoes, right? If if it just it happened that based on research that people wash their shoes like once a year, then you might not have a lucrative business. You might not have a working business, right? Because it sucks because you have all these laundry uh, tools and everything. You have the staff. You have uh, you have to pay for the employees, but nobody coming to watch to clean. Uh, they use because it's just once once a year necessary. Then uh, yeah, it's not it's not a good business, right? So I want I want you to keep this in mind. Let's move into uh, let's create like an example. Let's move on into with the parking apps. So uh, parking apps is an app that help you to find parking spot and pay for it wherever in Jakarta, right? Why why Jakarta? Because Jakarta has this trouble of parking. I don't think uh, I'm not sure if other cities in Indonesia have problem parking. But Jakarta definitely has, and ha I have started seeing some of the mall. They have this like uh, allocated parking space where you have to download an apps and then install it, and then you can purchase the parking spot from that apps. So the problem is actually starting to exist, right? But probably not if you are in Jakarta or if you are in, uh, in Surabaya, where you can just, for example, like anywhere you want, right? And it, it doesn't become any problem, which is which is fine, right? At least we have a market, which is Jakarta, and we have. Uh, we know there is a problem. At least we assume that there is a problem, like parking apps. Okay, now you have an idea, right? And you know there is a problem. The next thing you have to do is you have to validate your idea. You have to validate the problem. Is it correct? Is it correct that you assume that people in Jakarta is painful, feeling very, very in pain because parking is difficult? Is it true? Now what you have to do is you you need to do an interview, and I believe this is this is something that most of you have not done, and actually this is one of the very 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 important and also the easiest thing to validate, right? You have to do an interview to a potential user. You have to do it to potential. You don't you don't do this interview to your friend, right? You don't do do this interview to your mentor. You don't do this interview to your mom not especially to you not to not your mom right uh because they will give you a bias and so on right so you have to do this interview to potential users, somebody that you don't know i prefer somebody that you never met right so rule of thumb always do open-ended questions avoid checkbox and option list okay 
um, when you're doing interview, one of the things that you can do is actually create like Google form, right? You can create Google form and then you can spread it to everyone. Uh, but in that Google form, it cannot be a void checkbox. It cannot be checkbox and optionless. It has to be open in that question. That's why I have come up with some of this uh, example of a question. Uh, if you ask someone, do you think this is a good idea, right? For example, if you, uh, you approach someone in the mall or in the street, and then you present, you present them like, hey, I have this parking app, right? This parking app will help you to find parking. Do you think this is a good idea? What do you think that will, will uh, the answer? They will definitely answer, oh yes, it's a brilliant idea. Nice, right? It is a very bad interview. And that's not going to, to work because you kind of direct them to uh, answer into something that you like, right? And then the second one is, do you have problem with parking? It's also kind of giving them direction during the interview. Do you have problem with parking? Most of them, they will say yes, right? Because most of them, they will think like, this guy asked me whether I have problem with my with parking, right? Yeah, I think I have. Yeah. Although we don't get contacts, like how often they got how often they got problem with parking, right? Maybe they just have it experience once in a lifetime, right? But we don't get a contacts like how often, right? So it's it's quite bad as well. And then uh, another typical interview question that I usually see is that from one to five rate your problem with parking. This one is okay because you give them some kind of range, but it's not practical at all. Right, because one from these people might be different from one from the other people. Right, maybe some people are very angry people when they cannot find parking in some place. They just put bad review, bad review, bad review. One, 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 one. Maybe some people are just uh, very, you know, very being kind, very generous, uh, very nice. Oh, it's okay, no parking. It's okay because it's school holiday. Okay, I understand. Right. This rate one to five rate is not practical. So how do you should ask a question on an interview? So it has to be an open-ended question. Like for example, how do you usually park? Right. So you ask, you go into the mall and then you ask, hey sir, can I have a one minute with you? Uh, I want to know how do you usually park. That's it. And then he will he will just he will just answer. Right? He'll just start um, telling you about the experience of parking. Right? He will start probably telling like. Um, uh, yeah, I went I went here on the weekend and then parking is a bit parking is a bit busier. It takes me about like uh, 15 minutes and 20 minutes to find parking. Right? And then you can you can continue with is that a problem for you, sir? Oh yeah, yeah, that's a problem for me. Now that yeah, you find a genuine problem. You find a genuine user to be interviewed, right? And there's the second question that is good one is the when is that problem of you? How often? You can ask this question, right? So we know that this guy has a problem. We just need to ask them how often it happens, right? Oh, okay. So you, uh, how often you go to this mall, sir? Right? Oh, I go to this mall like once in a week, right? So we can assume that he has this problem once a week, right? And then we ask them any other question like, what do you do to solve it? Now, this is very interesting. So we try to ask them, see if they already have a solution for this. See if we don't do what has been done before by some other apps. So we ask them, what do you do to solve it? You know that you have a parking problem. You know that it takes like 15 minutes to go to this mall and then find a parking. You know that this, between this hour and this hour, the parking will be usually busy. So how do you do to solve it? Right? He might probably answer things like, uh, yeah, I'll just come earlier then. Right? Because earlier, parking space is still empty. Right? Maybe he will come up with another thing like, but if I came earlier, then store has not opened yet. So no point coming earlier because I cannot do anything in the mall. Right? And then you will start to sense there is a problem. Right? This is very important. If you do an interview, you always do an open-ended questions. And then be, be careful of fast positive answer when doing interview. Right? There is a book if you are very interested in this um, in this uh, topic of uh, doing a natural interview, doing uh, trying to get an honest uh, answer from an interview. Uh, the book is called The Mom Test. You know why is it The Mom Test? Because you know when you ask your mom if you are handsome or not, what she will reply? 100% she will say to you that you are handsome. In fact, if you believe in yourself you are ugly, you will, your mom will 100% will tell you that you are handsome. 
right? Same goes is you ask your mom, mom, I built an app for this Bangkit Academy. Do you want to hear it? Your mom will hear it. Yes, absolutely. And then you will ask the question, mom, do you think this is good? Do I make you proud? Yes, son, this is very, very good. I think you will be rich with it. That's, that's what mom does. So the book is all about it. The book is trying to avoid you into a mom, mom, children kind of questions. Because if you create a questions like that, uh, people will not, people will be biased. And then uh, people also has an urge to lie to you, right? Um, uh, I, had, I had this experiment as well uh, when I tried to create a survey. Um, it's a very basic survey of asking how much money that you create, how much money that you make right, in a month, right? The first survey doesn't ask you the name and your uh, phone number. The first one. The first one just asks you like uh, you can type in anonymously and it just tell you how much money that you make in a month. The second form, the second survey, ask your phone number and ask your name as well. You know what happened on the second form? On the second form, there are many people that lies, right? Because they know that this form is associating with your income and on your name. Maybe we don't know, right? Maybe uh, this is some kind of company that will give you a bonus if you have this kind of income, right? So I'll I'll just lie in the form, right? So it's very important that you have this kind, you, you know how to do this in interview, right? So you can find the genuine problem uh, from your users. Okay, so we have this, um, we have this uh, problem matrix, which is very important. So the next time, uh, I think you can start thinking right now, the problem that I'm trying to solve is actually this, and then, oh, it falls into not important and urgent. Uh, it is okay, it is okay. Uh, we have, a way to find how to solve at least from the market perspective as well but uh, i hope you get a sense of it so you know there is a problem let's just assume that you know there's a problem the second question is that how big is the market right how big how many people that has this problem it is very important as well so i uh, have on the left i have list of uh, solution right? i have list of ideas and then on the right, on these columns, I have four things that you need to analyze. Four things that you need to know to define how big is the market size. Right? Okay, let's see on the, on the left one, limited parking space. We built a parking app earlier, right? And then we uh, understand the market profile. Who are they? Who are the people that will need uh, our idea? Who are the people that have this problem, right? Is a CBD worker, is a white collar worker? Pegawai, you do it. And then mall visitor, people that visit the malls. And then and then market size. How many of them? How many is this worker? How many is this mall visitors? And then we learned that um, there are only 400 parking space in the mall. And yet the most is 1,000 visitors with cars daily. So there is a problem, right? There are not as many as parking space as people coming to the malls, right? And then does the market grow? Is the people having this problem? Is the people having problem with parking space is growing? Yes, it is, right? Because the parking space remains the same, it doesn't grow, but number of cars grow 10% every year, right? Well, this is not the fact here, guys, so you cannot quote, on, quote me on this. Uh, this is just uh, me trying to put some numbers on it, so don't, don't quote me on this. But parking space will remain the same, land will remain the same, but number of people born into this world is growing. And people will not need to look for like a uh, home and then something. That's why price of home, price of apartment, they're growing, right? Because uh, the demand is growing as well and the supply is remain the same. And then market share. Market share means, is there any other apps that have the same solution? Right? Is there any other solution that solve the problem other than you? Is there any other app that help this customer, existing apps that help this customer to find the parking space? Right? You can put it like, I don't see other apps doing this if you don't really know. All right. Another example is the for Hamatanaman uh, plant pest. Right? Who are they? Market profile, farmer. Right? And the market size. How many? Uh, how intense is this problem for this farmer? Like for example, like thirty-five percent crop failed due to pest every month. Is this an example? And then how does the market grow? So how um, how the how big is this problem? Will keep evolving. So uh, the fact might be like pests are evolving and getting stronger every year. So that's why the farmer need constant knowledge on how to solve the problem every year, right? And then also, uh, is there any other apps that do the same? 
Well, there are the apps, and it has 1,000 active users. Right? It goes on, it goes on, and then into don't find the last one, right? Finding girlfriend. Right? What are the market profile? Market profile is probably those guys that is Jomblo, right? Age wise, maybe it's um, you know, age wise is that critical kind of age that uh, your mom and your parents keep pushing you. You have to get married. You have to get. You have to get married. Otherwise, you will be scratched from the KK, kartu keluarga, right? Or maybe because of a peer pressure, right? Your friends around you that have girlfriend. Hey, I have girlfriend. I have girlfriend. You don't have girlfriend. I'll pity you. Something like that. Um, it become problem, right? This job blog, it become problem. They need to find a girlfriend like immediately, right? Otherwise, I will be very very shameful, right? And then there is is there a market set? Yes, obviously there's a market size, right? We can uh, we can come up uh, like how many people out there is actually jomblo and looking for girlfriend, and then. It, Will the market grow? Yes, as more people are born. And the market share, now this is interesting. If you think you believe that you have a very great idea, right? And then you start to look on others. You start to look at, is there any other one out there that has done the same? Tinder, MeChat, etc., etc., etc. Right? Why, why I have to mention this? Because um, can you imagine if you try to book an app that try to compete with Gojek? Can you imagine if you have tried to build an app that compete with Tinder, right? Uh, the market share is kind of um, occupied by them, right? So it's almost like you have like a very little space to move with your ideas, with the solutions. Um, maybe you need to uh, differentiate with them, but it's very tough. It's very tough market, right? So it's very important that you understand this if you have a competitor, okay? So we have these uh, examples. Uh, how you get it, and then how to find how to big markets. This one is actually this, this time very easy. Uh, during the problem, finding the real problem, you need to like uh, go interview the people. That's what you have to do, go interview the people. But if you want to know like how to find out how the big market is, one of the things that you can do is actually you just Google it, right? I want to know how many people have problem with the home waste disposal. You can just Google it, like um, jumlah sampah domestic. Right. Or if you want to build like uh, girlfriend finding apps, you can just find um, berapa orang jomblo di Indonesia. Right? If you want to find, uh, if you want, if you need to research about um, how many, how how difficult is it to find a parking area in Jakarta, you can just find uh, lahan parkir versus jumlah mobil. Right? If you have a very excellent Google skill, I think this one is is, is a very easy one. Right. Okay. So we have problems. We have problems. So we know that. Oh yes, uh, we have we have a certain problem that we need to solve, and the market is big. Right. Let's just assume that we have problem. And we have the market. The next one is how much the target market willing to pay. Right. It's no use that you have a huge market. It's no use that you have a problem to solve, but nobody wants to pay for it. Right. Because in the end. Startup is about, you know, uh, scaling and trying to sustain. And by meaning of sustaining needs money, right? So if you don't have money, uh, you will become like a CSR kind of uh, startup or you need the money to grow your, uh, to pay for yourself, yeah? to pay for your meals, right? to pay for your things. Like so it's very important that uh, you have a problem, yes. You have a big market, yes. But you need to question them again, how much that you are willing to pay for your solution. Okay, so how do you find out, how do I know if, uh, how much that um, you will pay for my service, right? You do another interview, right? This is, this is what, I, what I want you to do. So this level one is actually the easiest one. Whatever your idea is, you know there is a user to your idea, you know this user has problem, you come to them, Right? You come to them and then you offer your service without giving them presentation, without giving them apps to show, without giving them like this design, I have this awesome design. No, you just ask them the solution immediately. So for example, in this case of a parking app, you can go into a people, maybe these people, they are still in the car, they are still you know, going back and forth into the basement one, basement two, basement three, after 15 minutes, they haven't find it. You knock on his car, right? You knock and say, hey sir, I can help you find parking 15 minutes from now. 
how much do you want me to pay for that? Right. You got a validation. And then you they will they will ask you, right? I will pay you 10, 20,000 rupiah if you find me parking right now. Right. And do you know who has done this kind of service? Do you know? It's Tukang Parkir. Right. What, what do you think Tukang Parkir does in our Alpha Midi Indomart? Right? It helps you to get into the right parking spot. Right? He has a business. He has a problem. The problem is that people find it difficult to find a parking spot in a very tiny Indomart or Alpha Mart parking space. Right? He will help you, right? You go into like uh, you want to go into like this cafe, right? And then the parking spot is very, very busy. Right? And then you see this mass mass parking, and then you ask, hey mas, uh, parkir dong. It's a solution, right? It's a problem. I have problem, and this mass mass parking, they have solution, right? What this mass mass parking does is actually a solution that can work millions, right? But they are just he's just doing it manually without any digital solution. Right? But they have proof it, they have validated people need it, right? And then they will help you find the parking area. Mas mas ini itu parkir depan rumah itu aja apa kok saya kenal orangnya, right? And then you will give them money, right? So that way we know that people will actually pay for your service, right? If you have another example, uh, uh, let's go back with that finding girlfriend, right? Um, maybe you are familiar with term like mak comblang. Right, and then you can say like, I will find the right girlfriend for you if you give me one hundred thousand. Will you pay for it or not? And then he will probably go, Oh, one hundred thousand is too expensive. I'll just go find my girlfriend. And it's okay, right? And then you lower the price, right? I will find you girlfriend if you give me fifty thousand, right? And from that point, you know how much are these people willing to pay for your service, right? You don't need to create a DAC. You don't need to create like an apps. You don't need to create. You, you don't need to create anything. You just, you just selling them the, the athlete and then asking them how much you have, uh, you want to pay if I help you with your problem. That's it. That's a level one. That's a level one. That's the easiest thing that you can do, and I very very uh, and I urge you to do it. Right after this after this webinar, I want you to go to your uh, uh, customer. Right, ask them. I will. Help you with your problem right now. Right now, how much do you want to pay for that? Right. And then you will get, you will be saying like oh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. You keep it, right? You keep it. And then I will tell you later on how does it, it, it will impact the sustainability of your startup. And then the level two, clickable mockup. This is, I think this is the, uh, this is the phase you are in right now, right? You are, you need to create a clickable mockup, right? This one is also very interesting, right? For example, I create a very simple uh, UI here right now, an app, a parking app. When you open a parking app, it will kind of detect your location. And then it will say uh, something like, give you sense of an urgency that, oh, if you're looking by yourself, and then you will need like this minutes to find parking space right now, right? And there is a button that says, find parking now for as low as $1. This one is just a clickable mockup. It's not a real mockup. So what you have to do is you bring this mockup Right, you have you you bring this UI, you give it to someone that it needs, right, and then see his reaction. See his reaction. Don't direct them like, oh, click on there, sir. Click on that button. You need to click on that button. Don't do that, right? You need to see her reaction. You need to analyze like you have to watch uh, where where the button where the finger is going, and then uh, he will probably read it from up top. We will be reading like unit approximately to find parking space right now. You're currently at Grand Indonesia Mall and then find parking now for as low as one dollar, for example. And then maybe before he click on the find parking now, he will, he will, you know, you will sense that, oh, he's thinking now, right? He has a problem, but when I say that it start as low as one dollar, he is thinking. So is it too expensive? Is one dollar is ten thousand rupiah too expensive to help you find parking? Okay, so you revise your mock-up and then you change it into like uh, find parking now for as low as 5,000 rupiah. And then you, again, you show them, don't direct them where to click. And then you just uh, give them and then you uh, observe them, right? And then you see that that guy click on the find parking now. It's a, it's a mock-up, right? And then when they click and then it, it probably show that, uh, thank you, sure, you, you just uh, help me with my validation. It is okay. <laughs> It is okay, but at least you know. Now you know that that guy 
with the problem with the parking, they are willing to pay 5,000 rupiah for your solution. That's the level two. Level two, clickable mockup. And then the level three is PO, purchase order. Right? It's a practice commonly used by e-commerce, uh, UMKM e-commerce. They need some money to build their business. And it's not actually just that. They just don't need the money. They also need the validation. Will people, will people actually pay for my ideas, right? For example, if you go into a Kickstarter, there are tons of websites, there are tons of games, there are tons of concepts that have not finished yet, right? Some of them even just an idea phase. They don't even have like an actual product to show. They just have an idea, they sell an idea. And then they ask money, right? That's a validation. That's a validation. So if people look at the idea and then they are willing to pay for purchase order, you cannot lie on purchase order right? because you have to pay first. You have to pay first. There is not like uh, PO ya mbak, tapi bayarnya setelah terima. Bukan PO namanya, gitu kan ya. Cuma beli, gitu kan. Ya namanya PO ya bayar di depan, right? So PO, PO, purchase order means that you pay in advance, right? Why? Why would you pay in advance? Because you think it's a, it is a good deal. Because you think the idea that is being offered is very good. And from that point of view, you know that there are like 100 people that have purchased order my service and they are willing to pay this much, right? And then you know when the product is released and then you know how to price them effectively because you know you have this experience that people is like willing to purchase for that amount of money. Right? So that's level three. I highly encourage you to do just the level one, right? But since you are in level two right now, it might be a good idea as well if you bring your UX and UI, your Figma, or your mock-up, and then you present it to your user. But never again, in case of level two, never direct them where to click. You give them and then see, observe what they are doing with your mock-up, right? But um, I still want to, I still want you to have done the level one part, the, another interview that uh, giving solution to them, offer them solution without having to have like a, a mock-up and then back presentation and stuff like that. So this level one is actually very, very important. And a lot of startup, a lot of huge startup actually did that. Let me give you an example. So do you know Airbnb? I hope you know Airbnb because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very huge. So the idea, uh, I think Airbnb launched sometime in 20, 20 uh, I don't know, 20 something, right? Um, during that time, it's still very weird. It feels very weird if you want to let someone in into your house and then that someone will stay in one of your room. During the time, yeah, during the time, it sounds very dangerous, right? Who will do that? Right? Who will rent a room in her house? Who will do that? Nobody is... You know, no, nobody is there to do that. Everybody will just think like, no, it's not a good idea. It's, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. Everybody will think that. But the founder of Airbnb have different beliefs, right? Half different beliefs. So what they are doing actually, they post someone else house room rent at Craigslist, right? So they they don't, they actually don't have, the, the founder itself don't have the house to rent, right? So they ask someone else, like a friends and then um, uncle or something like that. They put the rooms on a Craigslist. So Craigslist in US is similar to like if you open like a uh, 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 newspaper, you see a list of ads. Right? It's, it's Craigslist is like that. It's like listing ads. And then you just put someone else's house room on a Craigslist on behalf of that guy. Right? What happened? What happened is that actually the business is going good. People actually want to stay in the room of someone else's house given the price and then the question is that is that the is the host of the room is the host of the house will accept the random guy coming to the house that's the question right that's a that's the most uh curiosity question ever right the answer apparently yes if they have a particular price right i mean like i have an empty room uh i think i will calculate my risk if i invite somebody into my room but i got this amount of money that will can diminish the risk, right? So what they're doing is actually they put it on a crack list. And then once the demands become, once the demand grow, uh, uh, the founder of Airbnb cannot hold it anymore, cannot do it manually anymore by phone and everything like that. 
they start to automate email to all person selling homes in Craigslist and offer them to rent the room in Airbnb instead. That is a very genuine. That is a very genius uh, approach to growth hack your company. What they are doing is they email all person selling homes in Craigslist. So like they uh, see an ads like people selling their house. So they convince them instead of selling your house, I'll give you this amount of money if you can rent one of your room in my website. And from then on, Airbnb become one of the I don't know unicorn or I think bigger than that, right? And then another one is Pebble. I'm not sure if you guys know Pebble. It's a smartwatch. I used to have one and I love it very much because it's kind of a smartwatch that doesn't die every day. Uh, you know, if you have a fancy Apple watch, it dies every day, right? You need to recharge it every day. But Pebble use some, some kind of technology, uh, I think it's called e-ink, e that uh, you, you need to charge it once in every seven days. Right? So that's a very that's a very good product. They had a great idea, but didn't have enough money to scale up their production. So what they are doing is actually they go into a Kickstarter, right? And then raise money from Kickstarter from the purchase order mechanism, right? From there, they got the validation. People actually want to pay for my watch for like $50, right? And then they start building the production. And then when they launch, they launch it slightly higher than $50. They launch it like $60 or something like that, but at least at least you know that how much people will pay for you for that. So I hope you get the, I hope, I hope you can relate all of this, right? I hope you get the, I don't know, uh, benang merah from this. I hope this makes sense, right? Uh, the recap is the intensity of the problem. It indicates urgency to pay for your service, right? If it is a very urgent and if it's a very important problem, you will want to pay immediately, right? For example, if you, um, if you uh, got a motorcycle accident right, and you broke your leg, right, it becomes very urgent and important problem. Right? You want to say that I want to pay no matter how much, as long as you save my life. It's a life and dying situation. You want to pay for it. It indicates the urgency to pay for your service. If your service is not very important, maybe people are just think, yeah, okay lah. I will pay, lah, pay, pay, pay a little bit only. Lah. Right. And then the second one is the willingness to pay, right? You have a problem, uh, and then you you need to check like uh, how much people are actually willing to pay, right? Willingness to pay will indicate sustainability of your business, of how long your business will survive, right? And then market size and share will indicate scalability of your product. How big will uh, how big is your market? How big is your audience? And then how many of them will actually pay, right? So there is again two example here. Uh, this is an example of nice to have. If you have a problem that is nice to have, if there is this kind of solution, it's, it's okay. If there is not, then it's, it's okay as well. I don't really need it. And a willingness to pay because it's not so important. I don't want to pay too much for it. All right. And then lastly, the market size. And then we check on the market size and it says uh, on, only my village, probably not. only my family need this kind of solution. There is a, it's a bad one. It's a bad business. It's a bad business. All right. Compare it if that uh, I'll die if I don't have this, right? This kind of solution that I'll die if I don't have this, uh, and then you will put them into a station that I will pay anything for the solution because if I don't pay, I'll die, and then few people will need this. Be, even if it's only few people, but it's a very important, it's very urgent, and the willingness to pay is high, it's a good solution, right? Okay. Next slide. I try to make it more sense into your business. So uh, if it's a nice to have problem, then it has a low probability to purchase, right? People might not purchase it. Even if they purchase, they will just purchase for 10,000 rupiah. And the potential of market size and share is only 1K per person. 1K person, right? So potential revenue that you have is 10 million per month. Okay, you, start, you, uh, you start to do some calculation, right? Okay, I pay myself 2 million. I pay the programmer 2 million. I pay the designer 3 million. I pay to rent the office five millions. I need a 15 million per month, right? To run this business. If you see this kind of projection, uh, the willingness to pay is very low. The market size is very small. Then there's no point to continue the business, right? Unless you pivot, right? Unless you uh, find something else, unless you try to target another problem, unless you find that there, there's so many, unless, right? There's so many uh, idea that you can navigate from this problem, right? But this is very important because I think 
what makes startup fail most of the time is that when they realize after they build an app for like one year or one and a half year, when they launch it, they realize that nobody uses apps. Right? Nobody download my apps. Right? They um, they believe that when I launch this app in Google Play, and then many people will download it, many people will pay. That's what they believe. But they never do any kind of this validation. They find out that nobody is using. And even if they use it, if they download it, nobody is paying for it. Right? It, it's it's too expensive. It's uh, nice to have. I don't need to pay it. Right? So the startup bound to fail like that. And then the, the, the better solution, the better uh, startup one is that um, the one that I'll die if I don't have this kind of solutions. Um, so which means that it has higher probability to purchase. And then um, the willingness to pay is also very high. Like for example, it's, it's actually a cheaper product, but the willingness to pay is high. Like uh, it's cheaper, but people want to buy it very much, right? Um, and market size is also big. Right, so you have a problem that has a very high willingness to pay and then have a very huge market size. That will give you more potential revenue for you. Okay, so what else do I have? Okay, so I think I have, um, I hope I did make my, myself clear with some of these uh, comments that I get willing to pay and then how big is the market and then uh, how painful the problem is. So what I, what I really want you to do is uh, Start talking to your team, start talking to yourself, what kind of problem that you are actually trying to solve. And then um, do that interview with the users, right? And then uh, do, this, do this another interview, offering them the service. Although it's not done yet, offering them the service. So you know that how much they are willing to pay, how much they are eager to look for your solution, right? So, um, All right, okay, so foot dots, right? Foot dots. So I have these three icons on the screen. The left one is the painkiller, the middle one is the vitamin, the third one is the narcotic, right? So uh, you can put down in comment what kind of apps is painkiller, what kind of vitamin, what kind of narcotics, right? Painkiller is an app that you desperately need, right? It's an app that is very disastrous if you don't have it, right? It's an app that, you know, uh, if you if you don't have it, you will not be function. You will not function at all, right? It can be like uh, let me see what I have in my phones right now. See if I have an app that I cannot leave it out. Um, it's probably like an app store right, to help you to find uh, apps out there, and then it's probably like an uh, an app to recharge pulse up, for example, right? And then also there's a vitamin, nice to have. What are those? It can be like a Photoshop kind of apps, like uh, nice to have. It can be like um, can be like uh, Spotify apps, right? It's, it's just nice to have, right? And then actually the most interesting one is the right one, the narcotics. <laughs> you don't actually need this, but it's very addictive. What are those? Those can be like YouTube. Those can be like Facebook. Those can be like games, Mobile Legends, PUBG. And everything like that. You don't need this, right? Uh, you will live without it, right? You can you can go to the office and then you will live a beautiful life without it, right? But now that you have tried it, everybody have tried it, it become narcotics. And if you observe those people that uh, build Facebook, uh, build Google, and then build uh, Tinder and stuff like that, they're they're very very uh, someone that everyone respect in startup industry because yes these are very uh, vis visionary people right so they can see they can offer something that uh, right now you don't want it but once you try it you will want it <laughs> it's um i don't really it's not that i don't recommend but if you really want to find a business that can grow very quickly in a very small amount of time you will need to be a painkiller right you will need to be something that can find solution like for example, I gave an example earlier about a plan pass, Hamatanaman. Uh, uh, it is actually a painkiller solution. Why? Because if the farmer doesn't know how to solve this pest problem, he will lose millions of rupiah, right? And it will be devastating for him if he need to lose millions of rupiah, right? 
Um, yeah, so you can you can you can like map your uh, solution right now. I think my solution is a vitamin some sort, of, right? So what I have to have. Okay, so um, I'm not sure if this is possible, Mas Awal and Mbak Irene. So uh, let's see if we can go into a QA and a Oh, if anyone want to exercise, um, you can you can go to volunteer. You can uh, tell me about what kind of apps that you want to build, what idea that you have. And you can type your startup ideas and name it, name in comment. And then we'll go through together right? what you have to do with the interview, what I have to do to uh, check the market size, and then what you have to do to uh, you know uh, validate the willingness to pay. All right, I think that's that's what I have right now. I think we can go to a Q and A session right now. Or if anybody want to, you know, tell the startup ideas, and then we can work on it together. Okay, thank you, Masani. That was very insightful about uh, how we can validate our solutions and make it to like growth and sustainability. Have sustainability startup. Okay, guys, uh, it's actually really a um, great opportunity for you guys who, if you want to volunteer and type your ideas because we we have Mas Sandy here then we can discuss uh, together about how your idea and how we can validate it. Okay, we have one. Uh, I think there's questions from Gabriel Asel Karigan. How do you conduct the interview without being awkward nor intrusive? Please give uh, the trick. Okay. Okay. So I just uh, answer right now. Yes, yes, you can directly answer now. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, you seen like TikTok, everyone come and then give a prank, like ask question, right? That's that's rude, right? That's awkward and intrusive at the same time, right? But you can be honest. You can be honest and then say that hi, hey, can I have your one minute right um i have these questions and then probably uh give them some kind of a, a, a gift or something like that and then uh and then you start asking the question so that that's what i normally do i will go to the people and then um ask them permission first do you have a minute right it will be tough i know it will be tough but it will be tougher if you just uh barge in and then ask question right uh, hey, I have this solution and blah 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 blah. Right? That, that will be that will be more that will be more intrusive, right? So you need to ask or you need to ask permission for hey, can I have uh, thirty seconds of your time, right? And then of course the other thing that is very important is you have to dress uh, nicely and then you have to uh, look okay. And then um, do you know do you know why uh, WWF uh, they have uh, you need to observe here. Yeah? Uh, you know, in, in, in the malls, usually they have this WWF, they will approach you and then ask question, and then they will bring some uh, papers and then pen. That's actually a very bad practice, right? Because they have uh, paper and pen. That's almost like, I want to know so much about you, I will write not you down, something like that. But if you can just approach him the same way that you want to approach someone and ask where the toilet is, that will be not very interesting. Well, uh, yeah, I think. I think there's no particular tricks on that. I think everyone can have their own ways. But what I usually do is I will ask for a mission. Hey, can I have? Uh, can I ask you a question? That will be. That will be. That will do it. Yeah. Another thing that you have to do is you have to try it, and then maybe you will find out the tricks of your own. Okay. Thank you, uh, Masandi. So yeah, basically, we need to come and proper and politely, of course. And yeah, uh, give them actually nice, uh, nice appearance. Okay, uh, so I think here um, not questions, but someone want to volunteer about the, the before exercise. It's app to detect criminal activity nearby. Okay, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, that that is interesting. App to detect criminal criminal activity nearby. Okay. So I think, uh, Mas Sulaiman Gari, Mas Gari, I think first you need you need to define who is the user of this app, right? So maybe what you are thinking right now, the user of this app is actually the the uh, the people, the, the end user, the customer, right? Uh, they will go into the app and then they will open the app and then they will detect if there is any criminal activity nearby, right? 
But for me, I think there are two kind of user. The first one is the user itself. The second one is actually the the city officials, the police, right? Mm. So um, you're trying to solve a problem for these two kind of users, the end users who want to know if there is a particular criminal activity, and then how often is this criminal activity in this particular city, and then in a in a way it will also have a it will also help the local police to detect if there will be a, a criminal activity is going to happen in increasing in something like that. Right? So um, the first one that you have to do is you need to interview the user. The user. You have to use right? the police and also the user. Let's go to the police first. Okay, you go to the police and then you ask the police, how do you usually detect this criminal activity? Right? See if they already have a solution. Like for example, um, when you ask the police, how do you detect this criminal activity? Oh, we don't detect, but we usually got it from a user's report. We, we got it from a, a netizen report. We got it from citizen report, right? We don't detect it, okay? And then you can move on to the next question, right? You can move on like, when user report to the activity, to the criminal activity, and then what do you usually do, right? Remember, we don't direct the police. We don't, we don't like offer them, I have this app to detect criminal activity. You should use it right now. Cannot, right? We have to build this kind of conversation. We need to uh, listen to what police does, and then we can come up like, what is the best way to detect criminal activity, right? And what is the best way to tell the police that there will be a criminal activity? And for the end user, you have to get to know like, um, how urgent, how it is important, how important it is to find out criminal activity nearby, right? I think this kind of idea falls kind of into something that is, you know, important but not urgent, right? Um, I know there are some cities. Maybe it is important. You know, remember you remember when there is a case of Klitinke, uh, Kliti, Sliti in Jogja, right? There is a case, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Suddenly, people become like very, very aware that coming to Jogja is very dangerous. Well, actually, that is not the case. Like the uh, the chance of you get um, get a kind of problem is very small, right? So you actually, Master Lemon, you need to check the user whether they really need this app first, right? So the question that you can ask them is that, um, do you aware if there is any criminal activity around you right now? How many people get robbed like within five kilometers from your location right now? Or do you know how many people died getting killed with knife? on Jakarta, do you know? They will probably say, oh, I don't know. I need to Google up, right? And then the second question that you ask, do you want to know? That is very important, right? If they say like, I don't care what I believe that it is safe in Jakarta, right? Now, if that happens, that kind of invalidate your ideas because the user doesn't really want your ideas, right? But to me, this kind of activity, yeah, must our it's more beneficial to the police, right? What I can recommend you since uh, Bangkit is uh, you're doing machine learning, right? I have a similar, uh, I have a similar startup that I mentor is uh, similar to you, like detecting activity within a city. Uh, what I recommend him is actually try to look on tools like Twitters or Instagram posts, right? or maybe Twitter. This is more like conversation based, right? Try to grab conversation that says like I have been robbed, I have been uh, there's, there has been a sighting of people with knife, there has been something people of drug, and then compile all of them together, right? And then create some kind of uh, table, create some kind of uh, uh, data, and then you present it to the police. Hey, but policy, I have collect all of this data from Twitter that says that in your city right now, there are 10% chance of criminal activity happening on this particular place. That your app become important, right? Of course, it's based on the interview with the police as well that they don't, they, they ne never detect this criminal activity, right? They want to know, but they don't know how, right? They might come up with with, uh, with an answer that uh, I really wish that I know how to detect and prevent, but I know we don't have the right software for it. I, I don't know how to do. We'll just rely on people coming to my office and then they tell me what happened. Right. So yeah, I think hopefully that uh, answer. The question, yeah, must be. It's very interesting apps, but uh, be, be careful before you're going too far. 
Okay, so uh, basically we need to understand our customers, our current situations, and like, is there any stakeholders that take control about these situations and the problem? So uh, we can actually know where where our target needs, like, like that maybe. Okay, uh, we can move on to next is another ideas is pinjol business or pinjaman online i guess it says that great profit value what do you think mas pin, pin, pinjam, pinjol pinjol business pinjam online business uh, pinjol is in a state of uh, you know everyone can do that it's just a matter of execution so it's not a matter of like an early startup if you want to do pinjol nowadays if you start a pinjol nowadays uh you have to compete with a, a, a huge market share already right and then that's why i have that um analyze how big is the market if you go into pinjol right now there are so many pinjol there are so many certified pinjol already and then uh, you need to know how many uh, how many does it cost you to apply to be certified pinjol to ojk how much budget that you have to put on that uh, you have to put on that consideration and how big is the market share right considering considering there are so many other apps has been doing the same right if you ask me do you recommend to build a pinjol business right now or not uh i'll return it back to you right it might be beneficial if you have this kind of pinjol business but on a, on a smaller scale on a village that is not exposed with the pinjol apps right this is one great example um gojek is not yet in every city in indonesia right if you think that gojek is in every city in indonesia you're wrong gojek is not yet in every city in indonesia if you go for example to pulau belitung Pulau Belitung, they don't have Gojek yet. Yeah. If you go to a particular small town in Bangka Island, they don't have GoFood, they don't have Gojek there. Yeah. So what kind of solution you can provide? You can be like a smaller, you can be like a small king, uh, a king in a small city. So you can build like a pinjol business, you can build like a Gojek business, but in a smaller city, that's probably will appreciate your business. Because I know that the other company like Maxim, Maxim is another car sharing uh, business, right? They are growing very big in, uh, you know, in a cities that Gojek and Grab is not there. All right. So Pinjol business wise is a very, I know it's very lucrative business, but uh, so many people has been doing the same. Uh, so you know, you know, you know how to do it. Uh, you know how to execute it very well. You know, you need to know how much budget that uh, you need to put. You need to put into it. Okay, so for this uh, specific uh, questions, uh, we can say that it's more about the market and how we can uh, sustain with a lot of comp com competitor. Okay, so okay, next month we still have a uh, questions. It's from uh, Sar Al Naja. Okay, um, if we have a startup. How can we manage to fulfill our clients' wishes and demands with such limited research? Fulfilling clients' demand is important for the startup image. Okay. Okay. So I assume that your startup is um, a B2B kind of startup, business to business, right? And then you have to fulfill the client wish. With limit, with the, the key here is this with such limited resources, right? The answer will be very simple. If you already have a client that is willing to pay, why would you not add? more resources right and then it becomes it might become an apparent problem if the money that the client is willing to pay cannot pay the entire team right that's why it is very important in the beginning in the early stage that you check the willingness to pay how much the client is willing to pay for this and how much does it cost you to run the business right if you are into this stage if you are startup how can we manage to fulfill our current wishes and demands with such limited resources Resources need to be paid, and the client is only paying this much, and we don't have that time to do the client business. While the fulfilling client demand is important for the startup's image. Okay, so what what I what I want you to do first is you need to reevaluate like uh, your product cost, right? How much is your product cost you, and then factors that how much that uh, the business, uh, the budget they're using to running the business, right? If it doesn't match, means that you have to either improve your cost, right? But be careful see if the client is still willing to pay for that right because there's no point if you try to fulfill this client wishes and then uh you'll get frustrated uh you don't have resources to accomplish this client wish 
uh, flawlessly, right? There's no point on that. Fulfilling client demand is important for the startup's image. Well, what's important for the startup is not the, um, well, again, it depends on the business here, but to me, what, what's important is not the image, but the important is the business around it, is that how much money that you can get versus that how much money you will spend to get that money from the clients, in this case of a, a B2B kind of business. Okay, uh, thank you, Mas. So for this is like we Maybe have to so, align. Uh, one more thing, Mas. I will, I will add mm -hmm. something to that to that question. Um, let me give you an example that like uh, nowadays there are so many software houses that build websites, right? Websites for clients, right? And the prices keep going down, going down, going down because there are so many new graduates, so many people, uh, good programmer. They graduate. They can just build a website for our clients. Right. So what you can do to compete with their kind, you know, you have been running a business for like two years, three years, you are an established company, you have 20 people and then you have to pay for the building and stuff like that. You cannot just simply compete with an uh, undergraduate that just graduated uh, working from home with a very low uh, budget. Right. So what you have to do, you, you, you can build like a trust to your clients. You can build like um, uh, you can convince the client, hey, we have been doing businesses for like one year. Uh, we have been doing business for like five years. Right? We are just not the kid, new kid in the in town, right? We know what we are doing, and we can give you guarantee that you will, uh, we, uh, you can trust us, right? So this is another thing that can kind of uh, help you to fulfill your client wish, uh, if you are afraid that you are losing competitor. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, Matt. So uh, we need to align our operation budget and uh, cost how how much customers willingness to pay, so that uh, the our solution can still be sustained. Okay, we still have uh, another questions. Okay, uh, next is from Andika Bahari. Uh, have you ever been at a point where you thought that your validated idea isn't your idea anymore? If so, how do you feel about that? Have you ever been at a point where you thought that your validated your validated idea isn't your idea? What do you uh, do? You mean like, uh, oh, this is someone else's idea, or or maybe you are referring to your validated idea is not ideal? I mean, like your validated idea when you validated it and then you realize that nobody will pay for it and then there is no market, there is no need, there is no problem. Right? If so, how do you feel about that? If if I do something like that, uh, there, there are a lot of startups that I mentor is actually facing this problem. Uh, when they do a validation and then they start to realize, uh, Mas Andi, kayaknya nggak ada yang mau pake deh app saya. Gitu. And then, yeah, I have, uh, you have to, <laughs> You have to fail right now, rather than if you have spent another six months and then 12 months and then you fail later, you will waste so much time. So if you believe that after validating it, uh, and then you realize your idea sucks, uh, you realize nobody will pay for your idea, you realize that there is no market for that, right? I'm just making up, uh, you, you you think that you're just making up uh, market and everything like that, and you believe that it's not an ideal idea, what I recommend to you is to stop. Right. It's to stop. Or if you are insist, if you are insist, you can try to pivot. You can try to add extra feature into your app and see if it helps with the problem. Right. Again, even before you put another features into your idea, like new feature into your idea, you need to validate it again. Does the problem? Does the user with the problem needs the new feature that you put into the apps? Right. Otherwise, if they still don't need it, um, I'll just say that. Just drop it, right? Don't waste your time. Right? Uh, for for a fact, there are around. I've uh, I've seen this somewhere. I think in YouTube or something. There is around like ninety percent apps in App Store in Google Play that has never been downloaded once. Can you imagine? There is like I don't know. There there is like so many of apps in uh, YouTube and then uh, sorry in Google Play and then App Store that never have any users. Do they have an idea? They do have an idea. Do they have problem? They perhaps have a problem, but nobody uses it, All right? So, why, why, why waste your time, right? So the the idea of the topic right now is before you waste your time too much, before you get deeper, before you pay for a programmer, before you build like a PT or before you build a company, right? 
if you need to validate first if it doesn't work then it doesn't work right but of course you need to validation you need to do the validation right here if you if you want to know uh more detail a lot of more frameworks how to do validation there are a lot of article in google right so you can go into it and make sure that you do validation right Okay, uh, I hope that answer your questions, uh, Andika. And if if it's not much, just like pivot or not, your your ideas have no point anymore. Okay, so we are going to next uh, questions from Apriza Zika. How to convince users that our idea is better than a similar idea in existing apps? Interesting. All right. So the first thing is that you don't convince the users, right? Because if you convince, it becomes a job of a marketing, not 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 uh, not a startup anymore, right? If you try to convince that hey, our apps is, is better, um, you might get a user that way. But if your apps is actually not any better, then that user will be gone anyway, right? So again, back back to square one. Um, first, if you know there is an existing apps, and then you have to uh, realize. You have to apa sih istilahnya ngacak gitu kan ya. <laughs> you have to ask like, what what kind of things that my apps done that is better than the other apps? Right. That's first. Don't don't go to the users first. Right. Go to yourself first. What kind of feature that I have that the other apps doesn't have? Right. So there 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 will be need to be clear differentiation on that. There will be need to clear like a unique value proposition. Unique value proposition is something that you only have, like an apps, the feature that you only have. But again, this particular feature that other app doesn't have, you need to validate first, right? You need to go to the user, not to convince them, not to convince them, but you need to ask a particular question about the new feature that you just have added, right? For example, we have the we talk about the parking apps, right? So uh, there is the existing parking apps that help people to find parking, and then you try to build the same. Right? But you need to you you are trying hard to find differentiation. So you build an apps. You put an augmented reality on it. Right? You put like uh, after you park your app, after you park your car, and then the application will uh, record where you park. Right? So you will remember where to go back. Right? What you have to do is you have to go to the users and you have to interview them, asking that. Um, biasanya abis parking ngapain? What, what do you do after parking? And then he will probably reply like, oh, biasanya setelah parkir, saya masuk mau langsung. Gitu, itu uh, answer first. Answer second, oh, biasa habis parkir, saya foto dulu. Apa tuh? The, the, the pillar on the, on, the, on the parking space, on the basement. Right? So I know where to go back. Now, now you see that you have a feature that will solve a problem that other problem doesn't have. So don't convince the users. Don't try to convince. It is okay actually to convince the user, but if you know that your apps is actually not better than any other apps, then once that apps getting bigger, once the app is doing better marketing than you do, uh, you will be defeated immediately. So don't convince. You just need to convince. Your, you need to convince yourself that your apps is actually better than the other apps. Okay, so yeah, if there is an already, uh, maybe we can set competitor. Maybe we can, we can, we have to find out what our unique value, I guess, that we can propose to our customers. Okay, I hope that uh, answer your questions. Okay, so there's no um, other questions I see from the comments. Uh, okay, in the meantime, I think I would like to ask you, Masandi. Okay. Yes. So. Uh, in Indonesia, not not only in Indonesia, actually, it's uh, around the world. It's like bubble burst is actually currently happening, right? And um, what do you think about this uh, phenomena? Bubble burst of apps or what? Like the yeah, for the startups and any uh, the company that they are have to lay off their employee, you know, right? Like uh, yes. News, so uh, -huh, uh -huh. so what do you think why why does this happen you know uh it's it's a typical that a huge startup they will burn money so they can grow very 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 quickly right 
because it is, it is very essential for them to grow. That's why in the early stage, they have create this kind of a projection. Uh, it's almost similar like startup building is almost similar to any image like if you build a house and then your neighbor is also build a house, right? And then both of them is like competing which house that will be, which house or which restaurant, for example, restaurant, yeah? which restaurant is going to be built first and which one is going to have the more customer first. Both ideas are the same, like right? they are all selling the same stuff. They are all selling like uh, mie goreng, misalkan. Sama gitu kan, yeah? What you are doing is actually you try to put a lot of smart people. You try to pay a lot of people to get the business running very quickly, very fast. Right? But in the end, after the business is running, after the business is running regularly, after the market has settled, there is no more monopoly by Gojek, there is more monopoly by uh, Grab and everything like that, after everything has shared, and then you start to realize on the book, on the accounting book, that if we keep doing this, something like this, there will be no impact to ourselves anymore. Right, so we have to minimize our uh, risk. We have to lay off some of the employee, and then we will see that there will be no impact to our revenue. So these guys right now, they actually start to realize that if I reduce number of resources, it will not impact our revenue too much. Right? They they are not going to just lay off everyone if they know that it will make them go down. Right? They are very careful on what kind of service they have to go. They have to go down. They are reading their books. They created some kind of a projection to make sure that what they are doing will not, you know, sacrifice the whole the whole main business, right? So it's just I think it's just a matter of in the very beginning they try to grow very 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 fast. They invest very 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 high amount of money, but after everything runs stable and then they start to realize they start to do some uh, profit on loss calculation and when they are uh, asked by the investor, try to create a projection and then they present it, and then they start to realize they start to realize that the uh, uh, we are burning too much for something that it, that we gain not so much. That's why that's that's when they start to uh, you know restructurize and reorganize the company and then lay off some lay off some uh, people. Okay, so uh, it's actually the impact of the money burn actually again, and they have to yeah reorganize reorganize everything so that it still can be aligned with their business. Yes, yes, but because of that money burn, like a very early stage money burn, that's how they they were born, right? That's how they have this. That, that's how the Traveloka get this very clever uh, algorithm. That's how this uh, Gojek have a very good machine learning because of the early stage. If they don't do that in a very early stage, right, they might be left behind. They might be left behind because they they fail in competing in features. They fail in competing in technology. So it's important to burn that much in the in the beginning. Okay, I see. So it's like just natural ecosystems of uh, this this kind of business. Okay, so uh, I think there's no other else uh, question here. We have. Okay. We have one. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Um, we have still one more question here from Gusti Agung Vive Kanander. Uh, I have a startup in EdTech. It's still profitable, but I feel stuck to scale. That it, I'm afraid if I develop new feature, it costs more and fail. Did you have any suggestions? No. Nah, okay. That that is what this topic is all about, right? So you before you build that feature, right? Uh, you need to you need to validate it first, right? Uh, let let's for example let's say that. Um, uh, what is it? Then? Let's let's say that you have an attack application. Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly what your attack is, but let's imagine like you have an apps in that app that you have a, ma a learning material for uh, for uh, uh, junior and then high school student like learning material like Google Slides something like that exclusive only available on that apps. And then you want to develop like I want to put. I think it will be a great idea if the teacher and the student. Can meet one on one on a video, right? On a video or something like that. You believe that that's a very brilliant idea, right? And you disregard the 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 fact that Zoom is already there; it's been used by everyone. Right? You just disregard all that. You just think that I think that's a good idea, right? That's when that's when something goes wrong. That's when you think like this is a good idea. Let's develop it, right? I think you are on the right track right now. If you are because you are afraid to develop new features, cost more and fail. 
right? Now, before you actually develop this new feature, you can actually go and then do the interview with the users, right? Just be careful with the interview, right? You can go in the user and then ask them that, um, how do you usually meet your teachers in this pandemic era? And then they will say like, oh, I use, I use, uh, I use Zoom, right? My teacher use Zoom, right? And then you are still very curious, right? Because you are really, your bold, your 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 blood is boiling because you want to have the feature in your apps, right? And then you push them again, right? You push them like, um, oh, is Zoom a very good apps? The student will say, hmm, it's enough. I have everything with them, right? And then you you need you pull it again. You you try, you try to convince the student that Zoom is not a good application by asking that, hey, I have this feature. It will be better than Zoom. That is some. That's when something goes wrong. That's when your validation. So before you build this new feature and, cost, uh, and you are afraid it costs more and fail, uh, take your time. And then uh, if you have the capability to create like a mock-up, create a mock-up and then present it to your existing users. See, see if they have use for it. See if they like it. See if they will, they will pay more for that. Yeah, I think this is the, the essence of the topic that I present today. Okay. Uh, thank you. So, yeah, if you are, it's it's already on 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 great tracks that um, you just have to scale and have the afraid of that this this feature is actually going to work or not. And yeah, we have to back again. We have to validate the future with, if we can, with the very minimum resource like using mock up and uh, basic interview that understands uh, is this actually needed or not. A very uh, good question and thank you Mas Sandy for the answers. Okay, um, uh, so I guess uh, there is it. There is no more uh, other questions. I think we can wrap this session up, Mas uh, Sandy. Okay, uh, before we close, uh, I'd like to wrap up a little bit. Okay, so validating is yeah, we need to understand our customer problem. What is their most pain, most problem that needs to be solved? We need to understand the uh, importance and the urgency of their their problem. And then, uh, yeah, we need to understand uh, how how our solution can be sustained at the market and how much the willingness of customer want to pay to our solution. And last one, maybe we can, we have to understand how big the market and where is our positions in this market. Okay, I think uh, that's what uh, wraps up everything. Uh, oh yeah, okay guys, uh, don't forget to um, fill out the attendance form to the link in YouTube live descriptions for all the bucket cohort of 2022. And uh, once again, I want to uh, thank you for Mas Andy Colman for being an amazing speaker. And we have had so many knowledge about startups from Mas Andy, and it was very insightful. And we finally understand that to become innovators or founders, we have to validate every single thing. If not, nothing else but dying ideas left. Okay, uh, once again, uh, all participants, please fill out the attendance form through the link in this uh, youtube live descriptions okay uh before we close the sessions masandi uh did you have any closing speech uh, one or two words for bankit 2022 cohort anything that can help them improve their solution or helping them to pursue their dreams maybe um yeah i just wish the best of luck for you guys so then don't get uh be be encouraged uh because what you have been doing up to today is a great stuff uh, you might not, if you have a, if after this topic that I presented right now, and then you follow that, and then you find out that, uh, share that Masandi presentation, make me go down or something like, don't be discouraged like that, because it's, uh, uh, you know, during, during my life as, uh, uh, on, on startup, I think I failed twice. I felt three times and I was that like, I never say that I was the time, but I always say that I learned something from it to not to not repeat it again, right? So don't be discouraged if you fail, don't be discouraged if you don't pass bunket, uh, don't be too overconfident if you pass as well. But the key is don't be discouraged if you fail because uh, there are so many things that you learn from failing. I, I just, uh, I never regretted that I failed. 
I always be very thankful that I failed so that that way that I learned a lot more. So the best of luck for you guys. Thank you so much, Mas Awal. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mas Sandi. Uh, that's that's very uh, encouragement for every student. So don't don't afraid to fail. Just uh, like it says, uh, fail faster, and yeah, you will learn and grow faster. Okay, I think uh, that's all. Once again, thank you, uh, Mas Sandi, for the insightful lessons. Hopefully, everyone here can take a good note from today's sessions. As moderator, I'm apologize if there's uh, some issue during the sessions. And I'm Awal. See you at another session. Bye-bye, guys. Happy weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.